you're afraid he might end up with a broken neck. I don't care. End up with a broken neck. He's probably going to get hard off of that. I love this. Like, you really a anime character villain, huh? How y'all doing? It's your boy JC, and welcome back to more Perfume Mare. Read, route, you guys know the vibe. How we doing on this beautiful monday afternoon it's been pretty windy i don't know what you, where y'all live specifically you ain't gotta ddos yourself chill it's not like anyone's watching this series so you, you really don't gotta worry but if you send me your address hey bro this could be a little secret you know what i'm saying if you do send me your address only the people people watch perfume here no you know all right that's that's weird nah but uh we almost done bro we are part 20 i didn't think we we're going to get this far with this game but the different routes what you what you finna expect brother we're almost there we're at chapter five, so a little bit more pushing and we'll get to six. No, do we get to six? No, we got to six. Yeah, we, we're on chapter six now. But we got to get to chapter seven with Reed's route. And then we got to figure out if we can do Laurent's route and get chapter seven. But nah, um, yeah, we pushing on this one. Shout out to all the other people again, Uh, going back to the comment section. Bacchanity said, I did miss a confession scene. Will you have gone with them when he's cleaning the counters? Though, I think without triggering the encounter and rejecting him, you should still get a true ending instead of a new one ha huh. which is weird because you said i should have gone with him when cleaning when he's cleaning the counters was that earlier in the because you said this in the last part is that earlier in the Bruh. i'm sorry bro i my memory is so garbage i'm i'm so i'm so either way um as long as we get an ending a good one uh, that's the only thing that matters i'm not trying to shoot for every possible ending because i'm already milking the crap out of this game and i know a lot of people want me to see other me play other visual novel games so y'all should get some hot cocoa coffee whatever you drink you know what i'm saying and just vibe out listen to this bro this is like an audio book you know what i'm saying you ain't gotta even you ain't gonna even have the video open you know what i'm saying just turn me off i look ugly anyway okay. resting the back of his head on the upholstery reed gazes at you through his lower eyed eyelids failing to suppress the disdain he feels for your colleague reed lifts one shoulder in a half-hearted shrug if i off him in self-defense i'll get suspended sentence at worst see that's why i don't like this dude oh, i'm sorry i don't know i don't know how y'all this this dude just wants to kill bro he think he really live in gta you said he would make it he wouldn't make it difficult for any for us anymore he won't Reed sighs, almost forget, but his fingers brush against the grip of his borrowed gun. Still piss, Alan, let it go on the accord of having a mutual friend. Well, killing him would be more trouble than it's worth in the long run. Agree to disagree. Bro, county jail is like twerked up right now, bro. They are just waiting for the right action and words to align, Reed. Anyway, if it's not one of his, then who do you think it is? It's got to be the crazy effort from the warehouse. Yeah, hopefully Colton. Before you can finish that uh, sentence, the entrance door rattles and your voice dies in your throat. It's Colton. The thumping is insistent, yet light. Brief sequence of strikes that repeats with this rising frequency. Bro, she she the ones that perfect to honk the car horn nicely. Like, bro, you can't do it no other way. Mm -mm, honey boo boo, get that, get that honk on. Rest it on the hand, the front firearm, but not yet retrieving it. Reed stands up slowly and places himself between you and the door. It's not Colton. You think? If it comes out Snyder than you intended, it's because Reed's stating the obvious. Colton's risks are weak. They have been, she got them broken before joining. So she can't freaking knock a door? Jesus. She better use her arm cast and bang it with her elbow or something. All right, brother, calm down. As the knocking converts into pounding, inside of the cabin suffuses with the air acerbic sting of lemon zest and vinegar. Ever since the incident that Reed left a near Crick, uh, a year after sentencing. After he came to Lazar, he hated, he's hated for being unprepared, caught unprepared. He's, it's not surprising when he's confronting the unknown, he's more angry than scared. The, though the walls of the cabin are thick, reinforced, and shabbiness of the outdoors is a great disguise, and the generous safety measures Alon spared no expenses for having, uh, have a con, blah, 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 blah. All right, cool, whatever. Just let the boy in. If he's an op, shoot him. You got the M9, M M the M9. Holding your breath, you prick your ears, you prick up your ears for even uh, the faintest noise, but other than the wild staccato of your elevated pulse, you're unable to catch anything else. You think they're gone? Bro, you know he got a good hearing, you know he can hear that, that we're still talking? Seems like more like a trap, an obvious one. Unless, something spooked them. Okay, what the hell's going on? As if something, as if something summoned, Reed's phone vibrates, the buzz magnified by the hushed atmosphere. Freaking finally. 
picking up the discarded phone, Reed reads the message out loud, impatient, thickening his voice, even as the tension eases from his shoulder and sent a light. Alon says, all clear. And there, another SMS arrives just as Reed finishes the first. And hurry up jackass just for that i'm keeping the gun what like what just for that sure if reed wants to pretend he had even the faintest intention of leaving the cabin without it then so be it it's not like a lawn would mine even if he noticed you couldn't give him half a crap either way as you b open each bolt unlocking the first double then the main the part of you anticipate a barrel of a shotgun directed uh i i meant i bro i thought it was said shotgun direct out of your forehead the moment you exit the building it doesn't happen. Outdoors doesn't bear any signs of disturbance, except for the two extra tire marks carved in the freshly disturbed dirt where the beaten soil replaced with the worn asphalt. Aside from the age imprints leading to the car, Reed's car, one of the two freshener tracks had to be left by the intruder. There are no visible footprints and no other clues pointing to their movements. Third trail belongs to the white caper van parked neatly in the front of the wrecked building vis-a-vis -vis the wooden fence. The owner of the vehicle leans against the side, twirling what looks like a macaroni necklace between two thin fingers covered in faded tattoos. In spite of the breeze, her dyed locks don't stir, protect, protected from the elements of the generous amount of hairspray. All right, bro. We've seen worse. Don't bother. Why she look like a cigarette smoker? Can can she be a cigarette smoker? With a shallow nod, Colton prevents you from shutting the door. Hey, bro. Watch your step, homie. <laughs> I got hands. Uh, her voice is sand prep. Come on, bro. Marbles. Sandpaper rough and tired, just like her green hooded eyes that darted toward the main road time and time again as though to make sure it remains deserted. The hideout's busted anyway. Which doesn't mean you should leave it open for anyone to plunder. But since it's not your place and essentially not your business, you abide by her decision. Lottie, ship herding you down the road, Reed's glancing around is so vigor vigorous, you're afraid he might end up with a broken neck. I don't care. End up with a broken neck. He's probably gonna get hard off of that. I love this. Like, you really a anime villain, huh? What the frick is going on? And who the hell is that? Colton, like most of his workers, is immune to Reed's induced headaches. <laughs> she lets him tire himself out. Then, and when the torn words pauses in course, it's in its its course, she pats her side of her van uninvitantly. Great questions. Hey, you got a bottle of water? <clears throat> we'll handle you Dasani, Dis but like my boy Thundershot said. What do we do with Dasani? <laughs> yeah, fucking pour it into the desert to make it drier. <laughs> <laughs> it's a meme, guys. Calm down. What about my car? Ditch it. Ditch it? Do you know how much it cost? Bro, Reed. Neither of you reacts. Reed sighs. Bribes don't grow on the trees, you know. They don't? What a shame. It is a nice car. That's true. They're hardly worth the hassle. There's still countless people walking the earth. Willing to bide Reed's silence with a nice field core or two. You can pick it up later if you want to. <coughs> <coughs> don't don't smoke cigarettes. You can pick it up later if you want. Um, taking the middle seat, Reed lets you settle near the window in case of the odor of emotion. It gets too overwhelming, and you find yourself in a need of fresh air. So, a lawn can roast me? No, thanks. Probably for the best. Reed gives Colton less than 10 seconds to take off from the high driveway before he's showering her with his with even more queries. Her explanation is brusque and full of contradictions, but she can't be blamed for the circus a Lazar has turned into during your absence. Okay, so just make sure I get this right. The woman who wanted to strangle me in that warehouse is either a rogue agent or a shape shifter pretending to be her. Pretty much, yeah. You want a white claw or some shit? And you're not sure which? Nobody knows, nobody's sure. The SPD is on a goose chase. Nothing new there. And there's a rumor the ACB is on the cakes. Oh, yeah, bye. This is so serious. Somehow until now, you were positive that aside from the SPD, the rival dealer would be the only obstacle on your way. But if the anti-corruption borough is involved, then crap is about to hit the fan. Bro, why are they... You don't even know their intentions. Why are you assuming? The ACB is about the uh, only department that is respected amongst the even the afflicted population. They operate in a very hush-hush manner, 
fading out the existence, then reappearing once every few years to arrest a bunch of politicians, agents, or socialites in one strike. Socially, in one strike. Rinse, repeat. It's just a rumor though, nothing solid. But it makes sense for the ACB to show up if one of their higher ups is killing their own and all that. How long was this going for? And why was nobody has nobody told me? We just got a call from Alan's crony. So it's not like you were in the dark forever. Besides, we, at first, we thought it wasn't too much. It, we, uh, we thought it wasn't too big of a deal. We prepared to wait it out for a month or so. Let the SPD catch the killer. But the case is connected to the other one, right? About the missing narcos? Maybe. All we know is that the killer is going through a list of witnesses. That includes you. You're great. Do you know why? I, I mean, for all she knows, the memory of the warehouse incident is still locked for me, just like she wanted. She's gotten too cocky, is what I heard. That or she's in a rush. Or maybe she's scared? Beats me. I just want a pack of marbles. Until we have more info, you should keep your head on a swivel. What about Flavio? You ask because Reed refuses to. At a stroke, the dryness of acid and sea salt spikes up because of her voice. It's like she's been smoking a bunch of pack of marbles for her rest of her life or something like that. Something like guilt interweaves with the, oh uh, my God, Reed as twists his head to stare at the blurred landscape through the tinted glass as though your choice of topic doesn't interest him in the slightest. Contradicting his apparent nonchalance, Reed's fingers start to scrape at the seatbelt, an entirely inattentive tick that gives away his worry clearer than his scent does. They don't know what to do with him, on top of everything else. Colton responds eventually, selecting her words carefully. He confessed to murdering Victor, so they detained him, but he has a stellar alibi. They thought it, it's maybe a shapeshifter that used his body, but they tested him, and he's the genuine article. So he's either lying to cover for someone else, or I don't know, it's strange. The killer, agent or not, she's an allure, right? Hey, you might be spitting, bruh. Reed cuts in, simulating a propose, a uh, propose of nothing. Yeah, why? Without moving his head, Reed glances at you at the corner of his eye. If she could make you forget a memory, she, could she create an artificial one and make someone believe it? Damn it. Yes. Yes, she could, if she's a five. But why would Flavio turn himself in without checking in with his partner? Maybe he was threatening into surrendering. There is something that could make him take the blame on himself. Maybe he's taking the blame for us or something. Something or rather someone. Ah, uh, Colton implores, pours our scrutiny to the road ahead, pointedly not looking at Reed. Yup, yup, that makes sense. She might not be privy to the reason for Reed's and Flav Flavio's falling out, but anyone could see that despite all the posturing they do for each other, it'll be nice if Reed realized it too. He don't want to realize it. He knows deep down, but he don't want to realize it. Ah, uh, cheer up, guys. Let's all go home and get a white claw. Look at it like this. All right, I can't keep doing this voice. Look at like this. Bruh. If he's detained, the killer can't get him, right? He's safer in custody than he would be roaming free. It's true. Assuming that the SPD doesn't have any more traitors within their ranks. But regardless of Flavio being in a pickle, we can no longer wash our hands of the case. We need to catch the killer ourselves before her meddling exposes our business. Are you going to work with or against the SPD on that. Technically, with them, they're trying to catch the culprit and keep it under wraps, which is more or less what we want as well. I wouldn't mind seeing them catch some bad PR, but we have nothing on them to stoke the fire. It goes without saying that you two aren't allowed to meddle, right? No. The what the f the one what are you fetching us back to a Lazar? Because Alon's got lonely? Reed rejoins the conversation only to badmouth his boss. Typical. As if. He says he's protecting his investment, which is as close to admitting that he's concerned as he, he can get. Read equally as touch as he is stunned. The spike of methanol. What the freak? Is that the, 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 the gum? Bruh. The spike of methanol is short-lived. However, the epithermal is the shock but just as genuine. It's not surprising. After all, Reed trust issues are mild, wild, and still he thinks people can only care about him when he's useful to them. And and he's anything but useful to Alon right now. What did he say? To get your bag? That's it? Mm-hmm. He won't spare more thought for our little trouble than it's worth. You know him. Anything that diverts him from the lawsuit is an annoyance in his eyes. Now he's extra pissed for... 
having to act like his own secretary hanging on the line 24 7 because every tidbit is important and nothing is concrete so he can't dump it on anyone else oh poor him having to work for his once in his life you get a raise if you were there Shh, bruh reed you are such a child ah yes if anything can make reed regret skipping his responsibilities it's cash you'd be lying if you said he, you didn't prefer to be back either between you and lazar there's roughly 200 miles it shouldn't be as long before you get your wish god dang that's a trip my boy 200 miles is like if it's at 75 speed limit you're looking at like two hours and a half low key in the span of few hours it takes you to get to enter the city limits colton receives more than 30 calls and double the messages nothing of importance is conveyed aside from the confirmation of a shapeshifter being integral with the case but on what ground is yet to be determined all right brother we in the streets colton drops you off in front of reed's apartment explaining that yours is still under surveillance and the neighborhood is swathed with a uh, viscid viscid twilight the tall lanterns and the red signboard of the round the clock liquor store illuminate the alleyway with the cold sheen making the rain puddles glimmer under your feet like shards of broken glass reed's unusual distracted gears turning in his head he stayed quiet for most of the ride and continues to mum as you stroll along the pavement going as far as to miss the entrance to his own building reed mm-hmm we're here Oh, he blinks oishly, owishly, startled out of his mind. Are you okay? His face shuffles through different expressions, like he maybe wants to lie. In the end, he wipes a hand over his head, letting out a resigned sigh. I will be. How about you? You've been quiet. He's been distracted. But sure, let's go with some small talk. God dang, that's a small talk for real, golly, boy. I feel like the moment I let myself to admit it, I... Well, it won't be pretty. We'll figure something out, I promise. He doesn't sound so certain. I don't need his certainty. The moment passes while he stands unmoved, thoughts drifting away. Your own nightmare riddled brain functions on one third of its capacity, which is sufficient for you to endure everything thrown at you, but not to comprehend it fully. But after the long road, your backside is completely numb and all you can think about is making the use of Reed's fancy bath soaks. Are we going in or what? He makes a vague sound that neither agreement or dissent, but catches himself and begins to search for his keys, taking so long to retrieve them that you decide to do it for him, snatching them off his hands and letting yourself in. Give me that. In this bit. What's good, brothers? Ray doesn't even protest when you call dibs on the bathroom. He watches you impassively as you speed through the living room, picking up a t-shirt and a pair of sleeping pants out of the mountain of spare outfits you left at his place the last time you slept over if you asked reed would lie until his throat went sore trying to convince you that he's not worried about flavio not one bit hell he might even believe it himself but you're not that repressed he cares so much that it pisses him off and the less he can do to help the more frustrated he becomes it's a real life disorder guys i'm not lying when i say these things thankfully his coping mechanisms improved over the years and nowadays his br his brittle anger can be soothed by thorough thorough sessions of cleanup the odor of chemicals seem to calm him down and he appreciates having something productive to do before you lock yourself in the bathroom you're treated with a monologue about f and spd and by which he means his brother and damp filth that has you snorting and laugh through your nostrils ill golly <laughs> make me want to sneeze bruh the apartment is as clean as you remember it save for some specks of dust that disturbed by your bustling begin to float coming into view once the reading lamp is on but still so inconsequential that you barely notice them but if there's anything reed hates more than the spd it's the mess it is in your best interest is to get out of his way while he's he's like this and let him unwind which in this case means firstly fiercely tidy up so fiercely in fact that when 20 minutes later you exit the bathroom dressed in fresh clothes and smelling like the tropical punch the room is spotless and the thin layer of dust begin to accumulate on the furniture is gone as though it is has never existed reed has expected in much higher spirits working his fancy milk frother and pouring himself a drink okay this time with enough sugar to give a lesser man diabetes. Diabetes type four, you mean? You're done? He throws over his shoulder, hearing you re-emerge. This so quickly is unsaid, but implied heavily. Not everyone needs to spend ages in the bathroom to look nice. Ooh, got him. You snark back, accepting his offered cup 
take a sip. The beverage hot enough to burn your throat, but it smells heavenly. And you know it'll taste even better. Did you just admit that you think that I look nice? That's what you got from... Not mine. Uh-oh. Are you hungry? Changing topic is swift, but you're used to those. I could eat. You're peckish at best, but you're not going to say no to food. Especially not to food made by Reed. Oh, he a chef with it. Okay, saw you built with it. Just about the knowing smirk, your eagerness had bled through and you're not so carefully to contain voice. Then I'll fix something up. Any preferences? Anything's fine. He already knows all your favorites. No need to remind him. Sure, I'll just take a quick shower first. Uh-oh. There's nothing quick when you pair up Reed in a bathroom, especially in stacked ceiling high with various bath products and such. Oh yeah, you're using that suave. Ugh. Once he disappears inside, minutes tick, and you finish off your drink and his, and in the end, you're forced to break it to his, in his snack cabinet. Kill time. All right, bruh. Is this his, his little studio apartment? Once he disappears inside, the minutes tick, you finish off your drink, so you save some for him. Leaving his favorite chocolate bar on the table next to the door in a strategic place so he can't miss when it, it when it, when he finally drags himself out of the bathroom. Giving the door a mighty knock because who said he has exclusivity for being an a-hole? You lean against the wall and yell. A tad louder than necessary. You alive in there? Do I need to call an ambulance? Just a moment. A moment, more like an hour. You have half a mind to threaten Reed with ordering fast food, but you value your life too much to not make that joke. Yeah, he's gonna strangle you somehow. When Reed finally does grace you with his presence, you're reclined on this convertible sofa, resting your feet on the armchair and admiring the sunset. The shades of corn silk and peach replace the golden shine of the lampshade, filling the room with the natural light. Look at this marble smoking looking at. Uh, Reed emerges from the corridor, surrounded by the dense coconut scent of the skin reddening from the steam nibbling at the chocolate bar you left him for, for him earlier. You gonna hurry up and cook for me, bruh. What a walk, walk at. His hair for once spared from the pomade, free of the weight of the petroleum jelly and beeswax. The soft locks are allowed to curl as they dry. The tiny droplets of water, uh... God dang, why are we getting all deep with his hair? Get deep with my nut. Huh, 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 huh. Uh, do you want to catch a cold or are you trying to seduce me? You mutter, sparing to have him half a glance because anything longer than a punch perfunctory appraisal is an invitation for boasting. He snorts. Don't flatter yourself. Then put on your shirt. I don't want to listen to you whine about catching a cold. You're so ungrateful. Some people will pay to see me like this. Some people simply don't have taste. Some people have more taste than you. Bro, uh, when are y'all just gonna make out? He rebuts, swiftly popping the last bite of the snack into your already open mouth to keep you from retaliating. Y'all the best of friends, huh? Coward. Licking the speck of cocoa powder off his fingers. Damn, brother. He moves the faucet to wash his hands, leaving you to chew on the snack and your unsaid words. With all the traces of, bro, this is a hot scene. I already know. Are you going to mix us some food? After all that time he spent doling himself up, you incline to remind him about the early promise, even though you're stuffed full of with the refreshments, if only to mess around a bit. Or do I need to call a takeaway? As expected, Reed sends you a look with a betrayal of disgust, slapping the brush on the nightstand and the ear splatting, splitting uh, snack. If you want to eat microwave garbage made of who knows what, spiced up with chemicals and rat crap, do it away from me. Mr. I only eat organic, organic whole foods I made myself has spoken. You suspect that he have only had the time to be growing his own vegetables too. Or not, it mean digging his fingers into, bro, dude, Calm down, brother. You won't die if you eat junk food once in a while. I just might. Come from the guy who called Jewel a princess. You have to agree with her. The moniker suits him better. I have a de very delicate palate. Delicate is not a word you use to describe anything of his. Whiny, maybe. Demanding, but never delicate. He knows you're bluffing, though. Left with a choice between breeds cooking and fast food, you always prefer the former. The knowledge only serves to reinforce Reed. Already solid confidence, unshaken by your occasional attempts at making him, uh, taking him down a peg. Resting your head on the pillow, you give him a minute to finish prettying it up. You do intend to nag at him with some more. The fatigue gives your body a cognitive, ooh, allowing it to act as it please. Your weary eyelids drop to the half mast. You stifle a yawn, not quickly enough to escape Reed's vote notice. You look like crap. He says, scrutinizing you critically, tapping the skin under his eyes, indicating his meaning. It's unnecessary. You checked your face in the mirror. You saw very well what it exposes. F off. Get some rest. Well, tell me what to do. He's right, though. You're going to succumb to your debility sooner or later. I was literally about to do that, brother. And when you finally shut your eyes, the second passes. And then after two, more your consciousness fades. 
You sleep very well and deep, uninterrupted. Dang, we ain't gonna eat as power naps. Hey, we getting lit tonight. There's a thunder. The pat power naps goes. This one isn't so bad. At least you've been accepted from the nightmares. The meager rest didn't give you, didn't leave you sluggish, a little blurry eyed. Still, you have to at least a couple of hours before Colton calls to make yourself fully functional. The sun has long set and the pounding rain patters and off and on against the glass a half open window even the sweeping coldness of the rapidly approaching storm deepens your weariness instead of starting you into sobriety rates equal drowsiness and slightly more energetic have been haven't been used to undersleeping he's on the second espresso while you're nursing your first drink watching him bustle around the kitchenette the lethargy is leaning has you leaning on the wall Half a cup into your lips as you breathe in the aroma of butter and toasted bread that drowns every other smell, natural or not. Despite the anxiety waiting for news about a Flavio causes him with his scent. Hidden. Reed seems completely at peace, chopping up the ingredients with precise. Bro, I've been asleep for like an hour or so. You ain't done eating? He's never he's never as focused, as content as he's putting together a feast. In another world, you could easily imagine him owning a restaurant. A family diner, maybe even something close to where he used to help out he, uh, with Flavio in a one-room uh, apartment above a bistro. It would be a quiet life, steady. One which he would have to handle shady businesses, dealing with the fallout of putting his trust where it shouldn't be placed. No matter how you try, though, you can envision yourself a part of that fantasy. Even though if you quit your job as a five with a false idea, you can't afford to get attached to a place, not to mention a building, a life somewhere when the possibility of not ha of having to leave overnight is more than plausible. It's something you have to grow to, and yet, eh, this is our pick our story mode life. The rumbling stomach dispels your thoughts, bringing you back to the present and to the meal Reed's making. It's his second attempt today and the only successful one. First course he served just an hour ago. He crawled out of his the bed uh, was the first plate of curses upon realizing that most fresh ingredients have long since spoiled. The second was you telling him he should have followed your example and stocked some pre-made meals in his freezer, which he reacted as well as you might expect him to. The cherry on top is the dessert he was making with toast, rather than a simple dish considering his usual preference. It smells heavily, though you know he won't let you have a taste before it's done. So you don't bother begging. Somewhere in the midst of tranquility and the evening, it dawns on you that you might be the only one of the very few people not knowing, not only knowing that Reed, the all-around disrespute, cooks his own meals and does it splendidly. But also, but who also tried it firsthand? Strange that before the warehouse incident, you didn't have any quiet moments like these. Each of you busy with your respective oblig obligations. Yes, you spent time together. It was never this domestic. Say, Reed, how many people have you cooked for? Do you reckon? Seems like a, such a harmless thing to ask. To welcome distract and distraction to sate your curiosity. And yet, Reed's posture straightens as, he re as if he's remembering something unpleasant. Look, bro, we really gotta act like... We gotta act like he's like some type of pit bull and we gotta say the right words or he's gonna bite or something. Flavio, you, some guys from work. His voice is steady, relying on his facial expressions. Alone, it's possible to tell that something is amiss. There's just enough of a pause for you to catch on the meeting. The only co-workers who ever got close to Reed are now dead and buried. Jesus. <laughs> there was nobody else after. And the friends he had left beside you, he'd push away. A year might be plenty to duel the pain of both betrayal and his official death, but not to make it stop hurting entirely, especially not someone who feels everything as deeply as Reed does. Has more associates than you know what to do with, that's true, but no real close friends. Not anymore. Nobody he led inside, both literally and figuratively. Jesus. More for me, then. Uh-oh. Reed scoff a laugh that verges on the wrong side of bitter. But then when he turns his head towards you, his eyes warm and pacified. Stop sweet talking me. He grins, the picture of relaxation, only his palm coils around the spatula a tad too tightly before he sets it aside, cutting on the cutting board. I'm not letting you anywhere near the pot with your sticky fingers. Killjoy. You huff. Take a sip of your beverage and regretting not having ever spoken on that subject. Reed doesn't let you stew in your guilt. Using a moment of distraction, he puts on a haughty grimace and tuts with a near per Perfect imitation of Alon's disdainful drawl. Exercise some patience. Bro, it's been an hour. Storm's already here. Be like that. And he's going to make you his double. 
I wish. He laughs, pacing the spatula on the cutting board and turn off the heat. Probably go with the pay raise. You know how much this his secretary gets? More than me, I'll tell you that. So I can only imagine how much he paid for that. After it's over, you need to... There's a knock. A second and third are strong enough to rattle the bolt the door in that frame. Reed scowls immediately, appearing more vexed than startled before he catches up with the situation. You exchange glances, both equally confused and apprehension only grows when the guest speaks up, turning out to be someone you least expect. Reed, quit fooling around. Open the door, it's important. Though the aroma is spices and steam, you can't identify the scent of the individual standing on the other side. By voice alone, he sounds remarkably like Elan, down to the lazy undertone of irritation. Uh, Reed's fingers twitch against his side as he's considering to go either for the key or the firearm. He has a hidden in a drawer within or easy reach, but out of sight. Can't imagine Alana out of going out of his way to pay you nor Reed a friendly visit. He has people for that. What's the likelihood of Alan coming here in person? Slim to none. Exactly. So trust your gut. Exactly. He did say it was important, but he wouldn't send one of his lackeys to retrieve you instead of him showing up himself. Uninvited in at that? He's all about propriety. There would be a call first, or at least an SMS, most likely from Colton or any of the other aides. On the other, out of all the people unaware aware of your location, there's only Alan and Colton. As far as Colton could tell, you weren't being tailed. Though to be fair, your whereabouts aren't that hard to deduce. Reed, I know you're here. A characteristic for Elan fashion. He doesn't knock again. After all, he's beyond repeat himself. Still, anyone who has spoken to him knows uh, is fresh out of F's to give attitude. Shorter than the paperclip temper. It would be that difficult to trait for a shapeshifter to copy and implement. It's not the time to fool around. There's an assassin on the loose. Okay, let's bite. Why are you here? I was in the area. That's what a shifter would say, wouldn't they? A shifter wouldn't bother talking to you, Reed. The oblique, you idiot, makes of Reed visibly torn. Believe me, I have better things to do than making sure you stay alive. Don't waste my efforts. If we're in danger, why did you come alone? Alan doesn't answer. It seems because his cell phone distracts him with the buzzing of an incoming message. Uh, Reed takes a step forward, then two back, shuffling it closer to the drawer. Expression is full of obtuse resignation, and he shoots you a look that means you're the one who have to make the final decision. Last chance, I'm in a rush. Leave us to buy. Okay, okay. Open the door, don't open the door. Y'all are weak for this. You know what? Open the door. Different circumstances, you might have snapped at Reed for dumping responsibility on you, but he looks stricken with fear, so you cut him some slack. Yeah, you go get it. He doesn't want your blood on his hand, but he seems you'd be fine with the role reversal. You almost preferred him to argue, but he surprised you by making an obsession by taking your word as an order. After giving a stiff, he nod, he marches towards the end of the room, pausing briefly as he passes you to point his shin to the drawer. Take the gun. He whispers, leaning forward until your arm brushes. His clothes carry the distinct aroma of strong brewed coffee, but even the heavy fragrance is sufficient enough to conceal, conceal the reek of terror that threatens to choke you with his viscos viscosity. If it's a trap, shoot the ever. If you're scared about the fallout, I say it was me. So, Reed, I could hear everything. Stop with the theatrics and get moving. Okay, that does sound like Alan. Still, Reed does unlock, doesn't unlock unlock the latch until you have the gun pointed at the door. Sitting at the vantage point, you are a distinct vantage. You can't help but feel optimistic. Your hands don't even shake, but your heart is like cocked a machine gun, ready to fire. Reed gives you a sign, another nod, before wretched the door opens, sending it. Slam it against the wall. I'm sorry, I'm reading fast. Finally. Perfect standing at can't across the doorway. Looks thoroughly unimpressed by the display. More than that, he appears to be bored of his mind. Surrounded by the flaking plaster over the dinginess of the old stairway, Alon in his designer suit and sleek and cut brogues makes for a side of the place a peacock of managed squabbling seagulls. Yeah, if he can smell, if he smells of anything close to distress, it's with his expensive cologne draws it all out. Reed excels, shuddering a breath, apparently unsured about the authenticity of Alon's identity. You scare the crap out of him. Without tearing his eyes away, even in the, in the screen of the cell phone, Alon arches a brow as if to say, What? Like it's hard? Let's not linger here any more longer. Still any question you might have, there's neither the time or the place. Predicting the questions, Reed sputtering. Alon turns his heel and leaves with a backward glance, offering you just enough time to put on your shoes and pass Reed his gun. God dang, brother. Apparently the apartment is busted as the cabin, so neither you nor Reed uh, wastes the time to close the door. Dang, what about the food? I'm hungry. You only glance mournfully at your would-be meal before accepting your fate and tra trailing after Alon to the exit. Could have sent me a message. Reed grumbles, matching his stride with Alon. 
Who do you think I am? Your secretary? Read Alon uh, retorts offhandedly without any venom. Most, if not all, of his attention is toward, turned towards the messages that keep flashing on the screen. Isn't that enough? I had to make a detour to pick up you up. You should show some damn gratitude for once in a while. Yeah, because you're swung out by out of the goodness of your heart. What do you want in exchange? I'm glad you asked. Alon smirks, a cold and calculating curl. It's about inviting as the walking plank. Jesus, that wording though. For a moment, you're sure that he's, he's that's all he's gonna say, but he does finish sending you a short but pointed look over his shoulder. You're something of a hot commodity lately, are you not? His pale eyes bore into yours as if daring you into contradict him. Scrutiny makes your skin ink. Despite the levity of his countenance, countenance he's not someone you want to have a problem with, so you keep your mouth shut. That's a quality we can find a use for, given the situation. That's out of the question. Reed grits through his clenched teeth, making a long chortle as he stands, pausing in front of his vehicle to unlock it. You're not in the position to make demands, Reed. Alon's voice is filled with amusement. There's a climbing undertone of it. It seems Reed is hit in his urge to protect you, has forgotten Alon's tolerance for his BS shouldn't be taken for granted. You're not as half as valuable as you think you are. That's a low blow, but well aimed and deadly. Somehow that sums Alon perfectly. And you will comply if you have a shot of common sense left. The comment makes you freeze. Reed frame shakes barely from suppressed anger, like, like a cat drenched in water. You're effed either way, but I can guarantee your safety as long as you do what I say. You. Fine. You didn't come this far to give up now. You could dance to Alon's tune if that served your purpose, as long as you could keep his word. Alon doesn't respond either way, simply ducking in his car. If you're easy to accept, acceptance pleases, you never know. But you heavily suspect that he wouldn't care if you refuse. What are you waiting for? An invitation? He calls out starting the engine. Come on. Nigga, so let's just go. You cut in, grasping the handle. As you enter the car, the movement on your right ensnares you. Oh my god. A butterfly flies out of the window, left a jar, the small pot of crimson against the window darkness. Demo finale. So we made it to the chapter seven. So we in chapter seven. Isn't it a strange place for butterflies in the middle of the concrete juggle, one foot? deep in the winter okay so we didn't die yet because i think last time we saw a butterfly we died before getting to chapter seven i think and that was with homegirls route Bruh. all right y'all we're home stretch i was reading fast as you guys could tell <laughs> i was trying to make sure i get that hoe get as much as i can in an hour because that's how long i re recording these videos look bro we almost done we about to see it looks like we g did it correctly because if we didn't we would have never got to chapter seven and i if i recall from jules route like i said we we saw the butterfly and then we initially got caught by the shifter and got killed but we didn't get a good ending before we got to chapter seven i think i'll have to look back at the footage but no nah, man i think we did it correctly and we're gonna see how we're gonna get to the ending i feel like we could still get to the good ending i'm not too sure the fact that we are we were able to make it to chapter seven says that much but um to me chapter seven it feels like you could easily not get to chapter seven by getting neutral ends before chapter seven so that's why i was kind of like we got to make sure we do it correctly so we can get to chapter seven i said chapter seven too many times i need to end this video the way y'all um that's it bruh hopefully uh you enjoyed this week's episode uh we will continue next week monday as usual and hopefully we will finish next week or finish in the up and coming weeks and get be done with this let me know your thoughts and theories on this so far what do you guys think i personally also feel like if they were to in the final game like almagam or uh perfume air avulsion if they were to incorporate a way where like if we picked certain routes right if they're gonna keep the route thing with jewel Laurent and Reed. I feel like if Peter or Rook is able to come like kind of connect what you would probably like didn't see from Reed uh Reed's route. If you pick Laurent, same with Jewel, you know, you see what you did didn't get to do with Jewel. Something in the along the lines because I think what happened, Reed uh Laurent just goes on a vacation or something, like with Reed's route or something. We don't hear anything from Jewel so far, so each of these characters pretty much the rely on us you know and Laurent's like the only character that you know we don't know uh, when growing up with so some type of correlation between not picking other routes and picking a certain route would be kind of cool 
to see. Hope you have the, a lovely rest of your day. Hey, be productive, bruh. Just do something. Go out and experience life, bruh. We don't always need to absorb knowledge, bruh. Sometimes we just gotta experience it, you know? Jump in the fire more. Again, Twitter, uh, I don't know, it's somewhere here. But I just be, I just be doing it, bro. Like, you just gotta follow the Twitter to see what's going on off camera and get updates on the channel, you know what I'm saying? Appreciate the 700 and Twitch as usual. Be streaming homework, streams, and we continue in Persona 3. Pull through. Anyway, y'all say bless, keep it super strong. I'm seeing one soon. Peace.